Whether you have a diagnosis or not, I don't care. I'll teach you how to find what's causing your health struggles using the blood work you already have right here on this podcast, but also in my new book, Why Are My Labs Normal? Go grab it on Amazon and let me know you love it and appreciate the knowledge by leaving a review for both the book and this podcast. Practitioners, you can now register for the In This Together live event with me in Orlando, Florida, February 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Grab the link to register below, get all the details, and know that we're in this together. We're going to celebrate you at this event, and I'm going to bring in the best mindset, marketing, and business experts. But more importantly, I can't wait to meet you in person and give you the biggest hug. See you in Orlando in February 20, 21st, and 22nd. If you haven't started using Systemic Formulas supplements yet, you should be. Go to systemicformulas.com and mybiome.com, M-Y-B-Y-O-M-E to learn more. You can also come join me inside their private Facebook group for practitioners called Systemic Formulas Clinical Nutrition. Everyone else can learn more about them and their amazing supplements and their amazing results on Systemic Formulas Instagram page. All right, let's get started and happy holidays. Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast with me, your host, Dr. Kylie. I want to talk to you practitioners today about what I have done in regards to automated courses and programs. I have a lot of failures I've experienced. So because of those failures, I can tell you what not to do, but I can also give you a few pointers on what to do instead. I'm not going to teach you how to set up content for a course or content for an automated program. I'm going to tell you how to actually get people to buy the things and get people in them. Because I have launched, like I said, many courses. I have launched many automated programs and I have failed at probably 90% of them. So we all want to do these programs. We all want to do these courses. Why? Because we can make more money and not require our time. So I want to bring you back to like 2018, 20, maybe 2019, beginning of 2019, where one of my patients who was a really smart businesswoman at the same time, she suggested to me that I should create a course. And I thought to myself, how on earth am I going to take this complex functional medicine stuff and dumb it down into like a six lesson course? I had no idea. Well, I love Facebook. This is why I spend my most time on Facebook because I like it personally the best. And I'm a sucker for some good Facebook ads. But my rule with Facebook ads is I buy the first, I never get the upsell. That's the rule. So I bought this three-hour workshop that taught you how to create a course in a program. And as soon as she mapped it out for me, I was like, oh, okay, I can totally do that. Well, then I thought this was before Zoom days. So now it's a lot easier to do it over Zoom and you can put your green screen behind you and have this beautiful backdrop and you can teach on the whiteboard. This was before Zoom days. Even though Zoom still existed, I just didn't utilize it like I should have. So my assistant and I went, we rented a professional studio nearby for an entire day. In fact, a couple of different days. And we did eight hour shooting days where I brought a whiteboard and a marker, a couple different colors. And I taught just like you would with Zoom on a whiteboard. I taught on, in studio on a whiteboard. We mapped out like every lesson. We spent hours on it. I spent thousands of dollars on it. I spent thousands of dollars on webinars. Remember, these are the moments where as a CEO of a business, we have to learn some really expensive lessons, unfortunately. So these are these expensive lessons I want to stop you from making because I made them myself. So I thought, you know, if I'm going to get someone into this course via a webinar, then it needs to be professionally done. Like unless if they get until they get through the end of the webinar, they're not going to hit the next opportunity. Let me tell you something. 
if you're going to record a webinar, you better be freaking confident about your offer. You better have excelled at the sales pitch on a camera, on a video recording. It's taken me a while to get to that point. I'm pretty dang confident. I'm pretty good at it right now, especially to a live audience, which I prefer far better than any other recording or sales pitch. So I hired another professional studio and a professional videographer who was going to make this all beautiful. I was going to stand there and he was going to embed the slides in. So again, this is a thousand fifteen hundred dollar workshop or or record or cost per webinar. And I did five of them. Let me just tell you that was like $7,500 I flushed down the drain. An expensive lesson for being a CEO. Okay. Have all the courses built out. I get into Thinkific's the platform that I Googled and it popped up first. And so, boom, I paid 99 bucks. I got Thinkific. We're punching everything in. My assistant and I, Kelly and I, and... um we're all excited because we're going to make all this money because people have done so many courses and I get ads all the time and people sit on the beach and they're making money through their course. Like we hear it all. <sighs> Nothing. Not a single person interested in any of the courses. I send out the webinars. Nothing. I threw in $500, maybe $1,000 into getting people into the webinars and Facebook ads. I might have gotten seven, eight, nine email addresses. <laughs> Not to mention how, many, how much money I put into a website designer building the sales page for the webinars and then building the sales page for the courses. You guys, this entire process for me Again, being a CEO, you learn expensive lessons was at least over six figures. At least. Maybe like 150K. Talk about expensive lessons to learn as a CEO. How much money did it produce? Zero bucks. And like the first 12 months, nothing. I would launch a program. I would launch a course. I had five courses, right? So I think if I remember right, I had PCOS, hormones in general, chronic fatigue, thyroid, and autoimmune, maybe. Some of those. And so when, if you're thinking about creating a program and creating a course, here's my to-do number one. Listen closely. Only do one course. There's a lot of reasons for this, but one is that you want to niche. You want to be that specialist in that one avenue. The reason number two is I had so many, not so many people, but the people who were interested in the courses, it was so difficult to decide which one was right for them that they just didn't choose. Well, I have hormone issues. I have thyroid issues. I have chronic fatigue issues. I have all the issues. So what course should I take? Do one course and one course only. Okay, that's do number one. So then I had this all broken down on my website where they could go from here to here and then choose which avenue they wanted. And... Ultimately, what I ended up deciding to do after tons and tons of failed launches, I remember one launch, we had two people get into our six-week program. First, I was doing an Evergreen, and then I was doing live uh, launches. First off, Evergreen doesn't work unless you have a professional person who's helping you with this Evergreen process. And even then, technically, doors close. Evergreen also requires a lot of ad expenditure, or you better have a freaking big audience. Evergreen means that they can buy from you when they are ready, when they want to buy. I did the Evergreen thing for a year. 
I was taking my courses out that I price it like, you know, 997, because that's what everybody says to do. And I was giving them practically away for free. I remember one time I was trying to get people in at like 49 bucks. Hey, come join this six week. I'm giving a coupon code. It's $49 right now. Literally, guys, I tried everything. So then I thought, okay, 997, let's break it down. Let's go like 549. Let's cut it in half and just see if we can get more people in. Then I was like, okay, let's try it at like 227 or and like literally every single time I tried it, we would drop it the price down. And I honestly just failed at doing live launches. I would say, okay, we're starting the program, the six week program on this date. I would talk about it like twice. My heart wasn't in it. Now, when I do live launches, I am all in because I love what I'm doing. I love the results practitioners are getting with it. Okay, so here's do number two. Don't just do this because somebody told you you should. You paid fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars for some program that teaches you how to build a webinar, and then sell your course. Like I said, the first time I recorded webinars, I mean, when I was paying for this professional person to get it done, I had somebody, another person paid someone else to write a transcript for me. That when I got to the pitch, to the time where I talked about the next sale, the opportunity for the course, I read it off of a screen. Everything I do comes out of my heart now. So do number two, love what you do. If you don't love it, you can't sell it. Because you are the hardest person to sell to. And if you don't believe in it, you ain't going to be able to convince anybody else to believe in it either. There you go. Do number two. Make sure your heart is in it. Number three. Realize that as you're creating these courses and programs, no matter how good the program is, you got to have people know it exists. So my biggest advice, I was pitching to, you know, a thousand people on my Facebook group. So maybe 20 people were actually seeing the content. I didn't even have an email list. It wasn't something I put energy or effort into. In fact, guys, I didn't start my email list till like the end of 2021. (laughs) I just didn't care about it. When everybody had said, you have to build your email list. The email list is the only thing that you should really value. Social media, that's where I spend money. I have never bought anything from my email list. Social media is where I buy stuff. So I was putting all my effort into social media. Now, I would highly recommend both. You do the social media thing, you do the email thing too. Everybody will always say, well, what happens if Instagram... Remember that day that Instagram and and Facebook shut down for an entire day? What did you do then? What if it just shuts down all all together? Okay, that might happen But let's be real. What will happen more often than not, and I've seen many colleagues, a handful of colleagues this happened to, was that their Instagram account got hacked. And IG doesn't give a crap about giving you your Instagram account back. So they've had to start completely over, scratch their entire other account where where the hackers were actually asking for money and people were giving them money through that account. That's more realistic about what's happening. Facebook and Instagram shutting down. No, that's not really going to happen. And uh, more importantly, though, besides what can happen is that you actually don't get to share your message on Facebook and Instagram because you're going to get filtered out. You all know what I'm talking about. That's why I love podcasts because I've built everything I have from this podcast. And not to mention the relationships I've built, 
the people I know all across the world because I've brought them onto my podcast. I've joined them on theirs. So if I, am, I, am I at number three now? Number three is do. Do build your audience before you worry about launching some goals. I will hound this into all of you listening. You can have the best course in the world, but if nobody knows it exists, or very few people exist, think it exists, you're not going to have a very good return. And chalking money into Facebook ads, unless you have a agency who's very good at what they do, running Facebook ads for you, you're flushing a lot of money down the net, especially post iOS 14 changes. I could run my own ads before then. I don't even dare do it now. Money going like this, cha-ching, 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 and you're not seeing the return on your investment. In fact, you're probably burying yourself in the hole if you're running Facebook ads. Some of you do have it figured out. Congratulations. I don't even want to try to figure it out. I have an agency I'm working with, and we're going to start doing that this upcoming month. So build your audience first before you are worried about a course. Now, you might be thinking, how can I build my audience when I have to fight on social media for, for platforms or for people who are already on their podcasts? Get on a, somebody else's podcast and invite their listeners to come join you on your social media. Done. It's free and you're leveraging their audience. Now, when it comes to courses and programs, what about, as my last tidbit for this session, what about going live versus having it an evergreen status? Something that's always available to them. Okay. Now, as a consumer, I have bought a handful of courses that are, quote, automated. I remember when I was getting ready to write my book, I bought a specific person's course, 30-day challenge is how they got you into it. And then like the only time I have ever fallen for the upsell, I ended up spending like over, I know it was over $500. Again, another expensive CEO lesson that I had to learn. Never opened up an email, never opened up a course, never opened up anything that I purchased. Now, can you say that's my choice? Sure is my choice. But you know what came down the road even better? A book agency. A person, Sandy is her name, who actually does, helps authors take the words, turn it into a book, and then take that book and put it on all the platforms. I would so much rather pay her to do the things I don't even want to learn and have to learn how to do all that stuff. So that's what I did. So when you're going to create a course and a program, number four is think about what you would do as a consumer. Would you buy it? Would you open it up? What I do like to buy, and I recently just bought one, I'm going to buy another one, is when people take those courses and they go live. It's more powerful if you can join the host live in person. So this last one, I joined um, Nicole Mitchell's, what, is, what does she call it? Become a money magnet. She went live with her course right after I recorded a podcast episode with her. So I regionally was like, okay, I'm going to just support you in this. So I get into it and I start attending her live videos in which I made time for because it was live. They were so good that it filled a gap I was looking for. Multiple gaps, but two specifically. One for my own head talk about money. And two, she's now joining me inside the brand new mastermind for you practitioners. Two lady bosses coming in as powerhouses to help guide you in your journey. 
as practitioners, we are designed to help people. We love to help people. Otherwise, you're in the wrong field. You can help more people if you have more money. So you got to ask for your value. This is just one piece of what's happening inside the mastermind. But to get inside the mastermind, you have to go through the 90-day program first. You're going to make sure that we have the foundation very strong for you and you resonate with me and what I'm doing. So don't underestimate, one, the power of a podcast interview. You never know who you're going to meet and connect with and what will happen after that. And two, go live with your courses. I have another powerhouse lady boss. I'm following on, on Instagram or Facebook. I'm inside a mastermind with her and I've kind of just been paying attention to her and her story. And she went from, you know, having your 10, 20, 30K months as a regular to now she's having $200,000, $300,000 months from courses and programs that she's launching. But this isn't an automated course. These are live with her. So she's starting another one here in the future within the next week or two. Because it's live, I am joining her for her $1,000 program. I want to see how she teaches what she's doing. I learn from the best. So the last tidbit I want to share with you is maybe don't think about it being automated. Think about it being live. And then you can take those live recordings and turn it into an automated course down the road. There you have it. There's what not to do and what to do when it comes to automated courses and programs. Trust me, I've done a lot of failures, lots and lots and lots of failures. Automated courses didn't quite work until I had a large enough audience that cared. Now, here's the end result. We took all of the courses I made. I had many courses. I had full six-week courses. And we put it inside my academy. Now, instead of buying one course, they get inside the academy where they have access to all of the courses. And that's the membership model. But before we go, don't do a membership. Because of the economy going, the last year, people have ran like crazy away from their memberships. Every membership I was on, cancel. Everybody who was inside a $99 a month membership, cancel. So we moved it over to a one-time fee where they had lifetime access, bingo. There you have it. I'm Dr. Kylie. Come join me on the next episode because you never know what's going to come out of my mouth. And it's all geared to help you have more income, more freedom, and more impact doing the things you love. Hasn't this season just been so good? We will end it right before Christmas on December 22nd and be back in January for more. Now, along with our incredible in-person event in this Together Live in Orlando, Florida, you have one last opportunity to come join me live over the virtual Zoom feed. December 13th and 14th is the final live Master Bloodwork event with a twist. December 13th and 14th, block the dates, 1 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern, both days. Go to the link below to learn more and register. You can also register for the conference right now and get your early bird pricing. All right, let's get going and let's impact the world one life at a time, one podcast episode at a time. <laughs>